Hey guys, welcome to our next lesson. So today we are looking at potential dividers, right? So potential dividers are circuits, simple circuits that contains resistors used for the purpose of splitting voltage, right? So based on the position that you would have your output voltage to be, then it depends on the value of your resistors that you use in your circuit, right? So the uses that we use potential dividers for, one, to control the audio of speakers, right? So the simple knobs that you turn to get your volume up or down is by altering the voltage being supplied to the speakers because of the change in the position that it is in terms of resistors. Temperature in a freeze-off, just the same. And the light change in your room, on, off, just the same for those remote um, lights, right? Now, if we look at this diagram here, we see we have two resistors, R1 and R2, right? Being supplied with a voltage from V in. So, in this case, we have current going in that direction, right? So, current passes through I R2, and then passes through R1, then back to I1. Now, this is a simple series circuit, right? And in a series circuit, we know that the voltage between or across our resistors, they are different values if our resistor values are different. So voltage split between R2 and R1, right? So that's where we get the divider from because a series circuit allows voltage to be split to each component. So when we add the voltage here and here, we get back V in. Right, so the hardest part of potential divider is to actually to get the equation that links our potential divider based on the question. Now, in this case, we want to find V out, and V out is across R1 resistor. Right, so V out could be here if we want to find voltage coming out from this resistor, or it could be here for R1. Right? So we're looking at R1, so that resistor there is our V out resistor. So what's the voltage if we're supposed to have uh, a wire being connected to this side and this side of the resistor? What voltage would it be supplying to any appliance that you want it to, compared to if it was over R2, right? So in that case, V in is what is being supplied to the circuit, right? Times which resistor it is over. Right, so the resistor value that's here is the resistor that the voltmeter or the resistor that you are covering that you want. That's the resistor that you put here. So, because it's covering R1, then it's R1 here divided by now what's at the bottom here now is the sum of or not the sum but your total resistance from your circuit. So because this is a simple series circuit, our total resistance for series circuit would be R1 plus R2, right? So adding these two gives us the total resistance RT right there, right? So at the bottom, the total resistance goes for the circuit goes there. And at the top, the resistor that we want to get the voltage from goes at the top. Right? So that's all you need to remember about potential divider in terms of the equation. Right? So it doesn't matter where the equation, how the circuit seems, you should be able to, the R here represents the, volt, the resistor that the voltmeter or your output voltage is across. The bottom here tells us what's the total resistance in the circuit. Right? So, by the end of the class, we'll be looking at deriving the equation for total resistance in a series and, and parallel. So please wait for that moment so you can actually see how to derive those two formulas. Right? So let's look at what is known as a Wheatstone bridge. So a Wheatstone bridge is a simple circuit just like a potential divider, but it only uses four resistors. Right? So the four resistors that are used, they normally actually join together to make that little 
shape here but it can actually look like that as well right now the main thing about the wheat stole bridge it was actually first developed to actually calculate or measure the exact resistance value of a resistor that is no not known right so we have four resistors we know three but we don't know the last one right so we connect it just like this and connect it to a battery supply right and let's show you how it works right so when current passes here it meets this junction right and based on our current shops rule we know what the junction is right so when it reaches this junction it's going to split so it passes through a portion will pass through r1 and a portion passes through r3 right so the same amount that passes through r1 will pass through r2 the same amount that passes through r3 will pass through rx now rx is our resistor that we are not sure of the resistance value for now how do we know when to stop moving our variable resistor to actually get our resistor value for Rx. Now, you notice there is a voltmeter that's connected between this end and this end. So it's taking your potential difference across two sides of your circuit. Now, this voltmeter is a very sensitive voltmeter. Now, when we move R1, R2, sorry, because of variable resistor, the resistance value can change, right? So when we continue to move that value until this voltmeter here is known as balance. And by balance, I mean that the voltmeter fluctuates between the left and the right, right? And the zero is in the middle. So when it's balanced, it actually will start pointing on the zero and while it points on the zero it means that there is no current that's actually passing over this line here so all the current is being passed through r1 r3 r2 rx right so when all the currents being passed here then we can actually use this formula here to find what the unknown resistor is right so as just like our potential divider, our equation for Wheatstone Bridge is not actually a one set formula. It's depending on the structure of the, the circuit and what and where the resistor that is unknown is. Now, when current is passing, right, it's going to first pass through R1 and R3, right? So that's the reason why R1 and R3 is at the top. All right. So remember, the reason why R1 and R2 is on the same side is because the same current passes through R1, passes through R2. Right? The same passes through R3, passes through Rx. So R1, R2 is on one side because the same current, and R3, Rx is on the next side, same current. All right? So the first two resistors at the top is because they went, the current passed through them first. All right? And then it came down to these. So it passed through R1, then it passed through R2, passed through R3, then it passed through Rx. Right? So that's how we get the equation for the Wheatstone bridge for that circuit. Now let's look at this. If it's structured in a regular way how our circuits normally draw. Right? So we notice it's still four resistors. Rx is unknown. We have R1, R3, R4 and Rx. So let's see how we can find what the equation would be for this Wheatstone bridge. So again, current passes from the positive side of the battery. When it reaches this junction here, it's going to split. So we have some current coming here and some current going there. All right? So the first two resistors that the current will pass through would be R1 and Rx. Right? Now, R1 current will go straight to R3, so that means right here would be R3. And Rx current will pass directly to R4, so that means R4 would be there. All right? So you see that it doesn't matter the shape of the circuit or where each resistor is, 
it's just to understand that the first two that it goes through will be at the top. The same current that passes through one, passes through the next, goes below that one. Alright guys, so let's look at how we derive the equation for finding a total resistance in a series and a parallel circuit. Alright guys, so we have our series circuit and our parallel circuit. So I'm just going to confine these circuits to just two resistors each, right? So things that we know about the series circuit before we start to go into the derivation. So one, we know that the total current I is equal to the current through I1 is current through I2, right? So the same current passing through is the same right throughout, right? The voltage, which is from our battery, Vt, is V1 plus V2. So the voltage here plus the voltage here is equal to the total voltage, right? So, and we know that Ohm's law is V equal I R. Right? So let's go. So we're using this part of the equation. So our total voltage would be based on Ohm's law is the total I. It's called Vt. It, sorry. So it multiplied by Rt. That's equal to the voltage of resistor 1, which is I. And again, it's the same throughout, so we can call it IT R1 plus voltage through R2, which is IT, because the same current passing through, times R2, right? So now we notice that the current is actually the same on both, all three sides, so we'll be able to cancel them off. So we leave back with RT equals R1 plus R2. Simple, right? So that's how we derive the equation for series total resistance. Let's look at our parallel circuit. So in our parallel circuit, we know that the Vt now is equal to V1 equal V2. So the voltage here and the voltage here is the same as the voltage here. And we know about current, IT, is I1 plus I2. Alright, so the current, it splits here and it comes here. So this total current, when it reaches here, some will go there and some go there. So that's why we add, right, based on Kirchhoff's junction rule, right? So now we're going to start with this equation, right? So we know that V equals IR, so therefore I is equal to V over R. So the total I would be VT over RT, and that's equal to I1, so it's V, remember all Vs are the same, so we can call this VT, over R1 plus I2 same Vt over R2 right so now we notice Vt are the same for each side so that means we can cancel each out so we leave back with 1 over Rt equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 Right? And that's how we would get the equation for parallel circuit total resistance. Right? So it doesn't matter how much resistor there is, we just add the amount. So if, if it was 3, then we add plus V3, so therefore 1, 2, 3. If it was 3 here, it would be 1, 2, 3. So it doesn't matter how much resistor there is, the same process still applies. Alright, so thank you very much guys for watching, hope you understand something today and see you guys next time.